All right, we are still now in John chapter 21. Jesus has pulled Peter aside. He's asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Peter responds to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Now, my Bible uh, has a little number one by the word love in both instances where it's found. Excuse me, it's got a little number one by the first instance of the word love, and it's got a little number two by the second instance of the word love in that verse. And if you explore that by uh, you know looking into the Greek, you find out that there are two separate words that are both translated love. And, and both can be translated love, but they are two different words. And so if I said to you, for example, do you love me? And you said, yes, David, you know I gaboogoo you. We'd be all going, hmm, what do you mean by that? Because I asked if you love me, and you said, yes, I kabugu you. And even if kabugu meaned love, we'd ask, why didn't you use the word love? Because that's what I said, do you love me? And you said, I kabugu you, right? So in the Greek, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you agapeo me more than these? You probably heard the, you know, the word agape, the verb agapeo. And when Peter responded, he said, yes, Lord, you know that I phileo you. Okay, both can be translated love, no problems there, but they're two different words. So why did Peter not use the same word that Jesus used? I have my theory. Okay, you know, again, this is in the context of, Peter, do you love me more than all these guys over here? Because you boasted that you would never desert me, and even if they all, all deserted me, you said you'd never desert me. But, you know, I told you you'd desert me. I told you you'd deny me three times. So now we're going to confront about this. You, you going to still hold to that, Peter? Do you, are you still going to say you agape me, the, 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 which I think is the highest kind of love, a, a supremely devoted love, a, an unselfish type of love. Um, do you love me like that more than these guys? You know, that what you're still saying? And so I don't think Peter defended himself saying, yes, Lord, you know. No, no, he, no, because he, he didn't say I agape owe you. He said I phileo you. And phileo, although it's a love, it's more of a friendship type love. It's a I love you because of. There's nothing wrong with that love, okay? It's just not as unselfish, perhaps, in, its, uh, in, your un in our understanding as agape is. And so Peter is really making an admission. He's with a sigh, perhaps, saying, yes, Lord, I'm not going to try to pull the wool over your eyes. You know, I know what happened. You know that I, I don't have that what you're asking for. I phileo you. I love you because of, but clearly I'm, uh, I wasn't ready to die for you, as I boasted. So verse 16, it, it goes on, and he said to him a second time, son of John, do you love me? Well, again, at this time, it's agapeo, and he said to him, uh, yes, Lord, you know that I phileo you once again, and, and, and he said to him, Jesus said to Peter, shepherd my sheep. So again, keep in mind, tend my lambs, shepherd my sheep. This is a calling. This is a commission. This is a mandate. I've got something for you to do. Even though you let me down, even though that you don't, you weren't willing to die for me, uh, I still have something for you to do because you do love me. You know, you don't hate me. You love me. How could you not love the Lord if you know anything at all about him? Of course Peter loved the Lord, okay? He did do something to defend Jesus. He, you know, lifted up that sword and cut off the, the ear of the high priest's slave, okay? So there's a little show of love to defend Jesus, but he wasn't willing to die for the Lord yet. But I love it because Jesus is still encouraging him, okay? He's still encouraging him. And the biggest encouragement comes next. He said to him the third time, this is verse number 17, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now get this, this time, it's not the word agapeo, it's the word phileo. <laughs> and Peter was grieved. Now this explains why he was grieved. He was grieved because he said to him the third time, not do you, not do you agapeo me, he said, do you phileo me? So that is maybe... You know, I can understand why that would cause Peter to be grieved. You're questioning that. You're questioning that, Lord. And, and Peter is going to defend himself. I think in this time he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you, phileo you. Okay. So Jesus encourages him the third time. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Okay, I've got something for you to do. 
And Peter did it, didn't he? We're going to read all about it in the book of Acts. And this should encourage you, because it certainly encourages me for the times that I've let the Lord down, for the times when I thought I was more devoted, for the times I wish I had been more devoted and I didn't come through. You know, and I think most all of us have felt that way at times. Now, get this next verse. This is the killer verse, okay? Verse number 18. Truly, truly, I say to you, he's talking to Peter now, when you were younger, you used to gird yourself and walk wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will gird you and bring, where, bring you where you did do not wish to go. And the next verse explains that he was telling him the way that he would die, the way that he would glorify God. And tradition tells us that Peter was crucified. Uh, he gave his life for Jesus Christ. Okay, and tradition says that he re requested to be crucified upside down, so, you know, because he felt he was unworthy to be crucified in the same manner as his Lord and Savior was. And, and uh, but nevertheless, uh, Peter died a martyr. And so what he didn't do, what he failed to do in the garden uh, when Jesus was arrested, what he boasted he would do, he didn't do. Jesus is assuring him, hey, you know, maybe you phileo me now, but as we keep walking together and my Holy Spirit works in you, uh, you know, you're going to agape me and you're going to prove your love for me by dying for me in a amazing, God-glorifying way. Okay, did you get that? Okay, so when you put all that together, it begins, this conversation begins to make sense, okay? Um, you know, so that means there's hope for me and there's hope for you as well, that as we keep walking with the Lord, we're gonna grow in our love for him and go on to greater exploits, okay? All right, we gotta finish John and uh, some important details left waiting for us there. I can't wait. I'll see you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.